Hello, welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. You guys know I love weather. As an aircraft dispatcher, as a pilot, there has been kind of a light flipped on in my brain from this actual book here, Eric Sloan's weather book. It is not a very expensive book, it's like 11 bucks. Uh, but I want to unpack an idea tied to something I found in the book. So I'm going to put up a graphic of that in a second. But first, I want to show you this website. I love this website. It is the Earth Global Wind Map. You can I'll link to it in the video description. And I can see here circulation patterns of wind. And something I notice is that some of the circulation patterns are going counterclockwise. So here is one, and then here is a circulation pattern that is going clockwise, okay? So we have two different circulation patterns going on, and I'm going to pull up today's weather map so you can correspondingly see that uh, this area is going counterclockwise is around a low, and this area is going um, clockwise is around a high pressure area. So again, why does that happen? And like, I was always really confused by that until something I looked at and found in this book. It is essentially showing us that a high pressure is basically a big mountain of air. When you start looking at a weather map, when you start looking at lines of equal pressure, isobars, more like terrain contours, as if the hiking map or something, like you're going hiking up a hill, a high pressure is a big mountain of air. And a low pressure area is more like a valley of air. Okay, if we look at those corresponding isobars. Now, at altitude, at about, about 3,000 feet above the ground, air is going to flow parallel to the isobars. And here is where this book got really interesting for me because they're describing how air is a mountain and air is like a valley. I mean, it's not actually an amount is not just, but the pressure is in like a basically it's formed a high pressure bubble kind of like a mountain and air naturally flows from the high to the low it like flows off the mountain into a valley that actually makes sense if you just think of liquid and air is a fluid if you think of water flowing down a mountain and going like into a valley that makes sense but the curving part always kind of baffled me so I got Another idea from this book, and I put together a little demo with a couple bowls so you can see why air flows always one way around a high pressure and the other way around a low. This applies in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere because of Coriolis effect, the Earth's rotation, the directional flow is reversed in the southern hemisphere versus the northern hemisphere. But the principle of the fact that wind is going to flow in one direction around a high and the other around a low, out of a high and into a low, that's the same in both hemispheres. So check out this little demo that I made with the bowls. So since we're talking about how a high pressure is really a bubble of air, we have the isobars marking how different heights of equal pressure. And then you have a low, which is essentially like a valley, okay? We already know that air flows out of a high and into a low. But why does it change direction? That's what confuses lots of people. Why does it go one way around a high? Why do wind flow one way around the high and one way around a low? Okay, I think it makes most sense if I look at it in terms of like a circular flow. And it doesn't matter what hemisphere you're in, it's just gonna flow the opposite way. So if I were to, for example, trace around the high and I follow my isobars like the wind does, as I get down to the bottom of the high and I move into my area of low pressure, you can see that air is a fluid. It naturally flows the path of least resistance. It's not gonna change its flow, but because we have it circling around a high, and let's go the other way. So circling around a high, following my isobars, as it reaches that change to the low, it is going to continue the same path, but because the low is a valley and a sort of a divot of air, it is going to automatically go the other way. That's fluid how air flows. It essentially is going to make a figure eight because of how my high is elevated and my low is essentially like a bowl.
try it out for yourself. See if that helps you visualize high, low flow from the two, why air circulates around in one direction, around a high, other direction, around a low. Thanks for watching Aviation 101 with Laura. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other content on weather, weather products, aircraft dispatch, airline operations. Have a great day.